Hi, Sephora here. In this video, I'm going to share with you five common reasons why a person is not able to let go of feelings and issues that they are holding on to. So let us know in the comments if you relate to any of these things or if you have anything that you would like to add. Number one, unresolved emotions. So this means that we've stuffed down emotions or haven't fully felt them. These emotions can also turn into other emotions. This means that sadness can turn into anger, or betrayal and abandonment can turn into crying outbursts, they can change over time. You might not be feeling these emotions at all times, but they could be the reason for underlying irritability or anxiety. They might actually be affecting you daily, or certain situations can be amplified because of them. You can think enough time has passed, or that you've let it go because you don't think about it every day, you feel like you've stopped caring, but this could also be you going numb to it. You might have become tough about it as a coping strategy, meaning I don't care, I'm fine. And on the other side of things, you might have become overly positive, toxically positive even, meaning it's fine, people have had it worse than me, no worries. And this can also be a coping strategy. You can tell yourself it doesn't hurt anymore, but chances are your inner child or that past version of you does still hurt. So these emotions need to be recognized, felt, processed in order to let go. Number two, Feelings of injustice. Another big reason why people can't just let it go is because of the injustice that they've experienced or the betrayal that they've felt. And it can feel like it's not okay to let it go. Meaning if I let this go, the other person gets away with it. You letting go and moving on does not take anything away from the other person's actions being wrong. But the experience is still affecting you emotionally and you deserve to let it go. So just leave the other person out of it. So you can look at these feelings of injustice and realize that it was unjust, it's not okay, but you do not deserve to harbor these feelings of pain any longer. And that pain can turn into resentment or vengeance, and this can really affect you. So this can be resolved by doing reframing, inner child work, and anything else that's needed. Remember, the injustice is not anything that you have to fix, make right, or prove to anyone. This area of injustice can be hard to look at and work on if you feel unsupported or at fault in any way, so self-love and self-compassion is very important here too. Three, wanting an apology or to understand. If you want an apology or to understand why the other person did this, it can also prevent you from being able to let go. So you need to understand and accept that you might not get a sincere apology. An apology with accountability can be helpful depending on the relationship that's been affected, but it's not going to fix everything. And sometimes the apology can even lead to more feelings of wanting to understand why someone could do this to me. So really, that apology is not the thing that makes or breaks your healing. In this apology section, I want to mention that forgiving yourself is what's most important. You do not have to forgive the abuse or the abuser. You have to forgive yourself and let go of any feelings that you have like you might be at fault, or those thoughts that you could have done better, or maybe you did this or that to deserve it. The only apology or forgiveness that you truly need in healing is that forgiveness of yourself. Number four. The adult self feels healed, but the inner child is still hurting. Something that I experienced a lot in my healing was that my adult version felt healed, like I understood everything, but I didn't know my inner child was hurting so much. So I had an understanding that my mom could only do so much at the time. She didn't realize how much things were affecting us. She was going through her own issues at the time. So this might even mean that you have an okay relationship with your family and everything feels fine, but this doesn't mean that your inner child is healed. It means that whatever emotions the inner child felt need to be tended to, that pain, confusion, whatever it might be, can be resolved. And this can take some digging. It can take some time to get to those areas that truly did affect you. Because sometimes something that seems very overt and obvious didn't really affect you as much as one would think. Whereas something more subtle or passing could have affected your subconscious a lot more. Inner child work and talking through it with someone who can understand can help you get there. Five, feelings of shame. If something has happened to you and you feel shameful about it or that you're at fault in any way, it can affect your ability to let go. Maybe someone has convinced you that you have fault in it or you've been gaslit into thinking that you brought it on yourself. Maybe you've convinced yourself that if I talk about this, I'm going to look weak, at fault, pathetic or damaged. If abuse comes from parents, you can feel shameful because our relationship with our parents are supposed to be safe, secure and understanding. When a parent abuses, neglects, or emotionally invalidates, it can give the child the message that they must be at fault, unworthy, or that they've done something to deserve this to happen to them. Which means now there's self-blame, which can turn into a completely unknown subconscious message of shame. That subconscious message of shame inside can turn into outer blame, 
meaning the world's bad, people are bad, I can't trust anyone, there's no reason to let go of this because I need to protect myself. The world is a scary, bad place. What helps here is to understand on an inner child level that other people's actions, choices, and behaviors are not something that you need to feel shameful about or carry that shame. And it's hard because a child sees the environment and themselves as one thing. So if I'm getting abused, if my mom is not nice to me, it must be something faulty with me and that's why it's happening. This can even affect adult relationships with abuse because if you've grown up without learning stable sense of self, expression, or emotional boundaries, it can be very hard to separate the shame you feel from other people's actions or situations. And I want to let you know that you are not to be blamed for lacking skills, tools, or understanding. So the shame that you feel from situations that you've been in does not belong to you. It belongs to the abuser. When healing, look at that shame as an indicator of where you've been emotionally impacted and turn that shame into self-compassion and self-understanding. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care of yourself and stay gold.